everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. This week I'm going to be talking about my upcoming races and a new project I've got going on called Project BAM, which stands for Become a Machine, but some other people have said that it also stands for Badass Mother you know what I mean. Which is super exciting, I'm really happy to be back on a kind of training program and while it is mainly sort of in between races that I'm doing this, it's going to basically build up to those big races that I'm doing and I'm going to talk you a little bit through how my training should look over the next 16 weeks. So in 16 weeks time, at the time of filming, I will be racing Try Run For Love 5, which is 225 kilometers along the Swedish high coast, which I am so excited for. I have never been to Sweden and I love a race that is a kind of set route, so something that people do, like the Southwest Coast Path, the Pennine Way. Oh my god, there are so many more that I can't even think of right now, like Hadrian's Wall, like all that sort of stuff. Um, those are all just UK ones. Uh, the Velibit Trail in Croatia was the one that we did in Run for Love 4, um, which absolutely destroyed me for a very long time. This one I'm hoping is gonna be a little bit easier, and also it has the added benefit of being to raise money for the Tribe Freedom Foundation, which works to end modern day slavery which sadly is still very much a thing. And I have yet to set up my Just Giving link, but I'm gonna do that now, this is a good reminder, and stick it down below so that if you guys wanna sponsor me to run a ridiculously long way, so it's basically five marathons in five days, you guys can do that and I appreciate every single penny that you guys can offer up. So that's in 16 weeks, but before that, about 12 weeks from the time of filming, I am running OCC as part of UTMB in Chamonix. I'm so excited for this one as well because as you guys know, I love the trail in the Alps. I love Chamonix and I love the vibe of the UTMB races. Obviously I just come back from UTS which was incredible, a bit of a lower key event but this year I think it's the 20th anniversary of UTMB and they're gonna make it a really big deal so I'm really really excited to get out there. It's gonna be 55 kilometers of some really intense trail running, mountain running, and I'm just so excited. But from the situation that I'm in at the moment, my training has been so far from ideal, and I've been really enjoying taking out a couple of weeks after UTS, so it's it's been two and a half weeks since UTS now, and I've been really enjoying basically just pootling around. I've done a couple of runs here and there, I've run every day this week, but just really short stuff. A little bit of dog running, which is nice because I get a little bit of a toe, um, and just generally having a really good time, and allowing my brain to relax so I think running without a goal every so often is really important because um, if you guys are anything like me you can get really caught up in having a goal and either overdo it or just get too stressed out or um, whatever it may be and I think just having that variety of really high intensity stuff and then just like chill time is super important and what it's allowed me to do as well is focus on my weaknesses focus on getting back to the gym and just generally like toning things down a little bit so Without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to Project BAM and you guys are so welcome to join me on this as well. It is relevant to everyone. You don't have to be running 225 kilometers. It really is relevant to anyone, especially people training towards a big race, uh, whether that is trail running, ultra marathons, or sort of marathon training, or just generally getting back into fitness. So. Project BAM has several different pillars, working on things that I sometimes struggle to keep consistent with. So I'm gonna talk about that now. These are in no particular order, by the way. They just happen to be the things that I think I need to focus on. So the first one is hills. The reason that I DNF the Lakes Traverse was because I, well, I had been ill and injured and I hadn't had the opportunity to work specifically on my hill running. So hills is something that I've been focusing really hard on since that race. And obviously UTS went pretty well. I actually felt really strong up the hills and I felt strong on the way back down again as well which is great because I'd only had like a month between those two races uh, to get training and I had started Project BAM back then and then I've taken out a bit of time and I'm getting back to it now. So the hill work is a combination of things. So there's tread hills, which is hills on treadmills. That's a combination of running and then there's a lot of power hiking up hills on the treadmill as well. So I stick it on 16%, do 20 minutes here and there, 30 minutes maybe, 15 minutes at the start of a session or at the end of a session. And then the Stairmaster as well, stick it on 
whatever. So depending on how intense I need it to be, I might stick it on eight or 10 or 11 and just walk upstairs for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I am dripping by the end, but I really love that. And then I'm also getting outside as well. Really importantly, a lot of the training, most of the training I'm doing is out in the real world, not just in the gym. And I'm working on doing lots of hills when I'm even just walking my dog. I will go up and down our local hill. It's not super tall, but doing that every single day is obviously gonna add up. And I think we spend so much time thinking of our training as only the time that we're out for a run, but actually everything you do is kind of training or not training and it all affects your fitness and your recovery. So I am doing my actual training and then I'm also doing the dog walks, which involves a lot of hill walking. So that's great. So pillow number one is hills and I'm doing lots of that and it's really good. The second one is strength and conditioning. Um, so for an ultra marathon, one of the biggest reasons for not finishing is basically just your body falling apart. It's not that you're not fast enough, it's not that you're not cardiovascularly fit enough, it's that your body just can't handle the load that you're putting on it and that's very understandable, it's a really long distance, five marathons in five days is not to be sniffed at and so what I really want to do is build up my body, build up my strength so that when it comes to that I'm going to be breaking down a lot slower than I might otherwise do and that involves things like lunges, calf work, especially important for the hills, quad work, the lunges are for quads so basically when you're running downhill your your quads can handle that extra load and this is something I love like I love running downhill but it is something I have been struggling with recently when I haven't been able to do hill specific work and working on that in the gym is really going to help me. Deadlifts I'm also doing lots of upper body stuff so I'm doing one upper body session a week and that is really useful if you're doing any races that involve poles because obviously the more pressure you can take off your legs the better it is especially later on in a race when it's kind of really hilly and you're sort of using them as crutches. I have found that they use my triceps a lot. I've got triceps doms today because I was doing my arm workout yesterday and I can, I tried to wash my hair this morning and I could barely lift my arms above my head. So, you know, the sessions are doing their job and um, hopefully, I mean, being stronger is only ever gonna be beneficial. So if you can get to the gym, whether that's in your off season or whilst you're training for something, then you can build up, become a strong person. And then if you have to drop down those gym sessions as your running ramps up, that's absolutely fine because you're building from a stronger base. So that's kind of my strength and conditioning side of things. I will hopefully be able to do another vlog about that, but I've done one recently that you guys can go and check out to see the sort of stuff that I do in the gym. But essentially it's a mix of like compound lifts, free weights and physio stuff to work on previous injuries that I've had, like with my ankles, with my calves, etc. Next one, supplements. So I'm gonna talk about protein separately, but supplements, I'm using multivitamins and pro prebiotics. I I am not deficient in anything at the moment. I've had blood tests recently and they all came back A-OK, -okay, which is great. But also I don't wanna give my body any excuse to break down and suffer any more than it is. And obviously like running is really tough on the body and you use things up a lot quicker because your metabolism goes faster and I just wanna make sure that my body is getting absolutely everything it needs. Also, I, I eat a plant-based diet, so I just want to make sure that I'm getting absolutely everything. So at the moment, and I, I vary and none of this is sponsored, but at the moment I'm using Heights, which is a new British brand, I believe, that has, oh God, <laughs> that has all sorts of different stuff in it. Um, it's a multivitamin, but it's also got brain care in it, which I think is super important. Obviously all vegan. And then this is my probiotic also from Heights. They got, they sent me a little parcel. So I'm working my way through those, but yeah, basically probiotics, good for the gut. And obviously your gut health has an impact on your mental health but also the rest of your body. It's not an isolated thing. So I'm just thinking like holistic all round healthcare is really important right now. So yeah, probiotics and multivitamins are on the cards. I'm taking those every single day and feeling good. <laughs> and the final supplement that I have been taking every single day is creatine. Creatine used to be a bit of a, what's the word? Controversial supplement. I think because back when I first heard of it, it was still relatively new, even in the weightlifting world. But now it has been used for a really long time. There are way more studies on it. I've also written an article for Trail Runner Mag about it that I'll link down below if you guys are interested. But basically, it's all good unless you have kidney problems, which I don't. So I'm using it basically to supplement my strength training, make sure that I'm building up as quickly as I can and becoming as strong as I can. It also has benefits for runners or potential benefits for runners. And at this moment, if I can find that extra 1% from something, then I'm 
really keen to do that. So I don't know if it makes a huge amount of difference. I'm definitely stronger in the gym now than I was a couple of months ago, but also I've been going to the gym a lot more frequently. So like, is it the creatine? Is it the extra gymming? Is it a combination of the two? I don't know, but it's definitely not harming my training and I haven't had any issues with it so far. So I'm taking that every single day and that is going well. So moving on to something which is also a supplement, but I'm gonna put in separately is protein. As a vegan, <laughs> a lot of people will say you can't get enough protein. And while that is absolutely categorically not true, so long as you're eating enough calories, the chance are that for most people it'll be relatively easy to get in your recommended daily protein allowance. I'm also going to be training really really hard and because of that I started supplementing my protein. This is the one that I'm using at the moment although I use a bit of a combination. This is from Vivo. I used to be sponsored by these guys. I am not anymore but I still really rate their stuff so I still get it. I might have a discount link maybe. Um, if I do I'm going to stick that down below again so that you guys can test it out if you want. The point in that is basically to make sure that I'm getting enough protein. I mean if you overeat protein, you weird out. So at some point it's just excess calories for no benefit, but I just wanna make sure that I'm getting that and also spreading it throughout the day. This is key. Your body can only process so much protein at one time. So if you try and eat all your protein at once, like for example, if you have a really protein rich dinner, that's great, that's really good, but your body can only process so much of that at once so the rest of it is just weed out. Whereas what I'm doing now is I'm making sure that I have some protein with each of my meals and or also at snacks, whether that is a protein shake when I get back from the gym with my creatine in it or just like apple and peanut butter in the afternoon, which has a bit of protein in it as well. Um, I'm just basically spreading out throughout the day to make sure that I get enough and a lot of people have requested that I share some of my protein rich meals. Unfortunately, I am terrible at sharing my food content because A, it's just ugly as hell, B, I don't know how to film cooking, I mean I try and like you think it's just really easy to do but some people make it look really beautiful and um, despite the fact that I've been doing Instagram for like 12, 13 years now, I don't know how to make food look beautiful and my food just isn't beautiful so it's not going to be aesthetic. If I share it it's not going to be aesthetic but it still tastes really good otherwise I wouldn't eat it so I will try and share that but I mean it's things like beans, pulses, tempeh, tofu, all sorts and also I think people forget that protein is in lots of different things, it's not just like a major protein source like tempeh or tofu that has protein in it. Each piece of bread, for example, that I have with breakfast is five and a half grams of protein. So have two of those, that's 10 grams of 11 grams of protein. So it is kind of in everything. You don't need to just think of the protein that you're having as a supplement or like as a chicken breast or like whatever it is. So it adds up throughout the day, um, but I'm just really focusing on that to make sure that I am spreading it out throughout the day. Oh yeah, and on that note as well, I'm also making sure that I eat uh, carbs and protein Protein when I get back from each workout because obviously the exercise itself is great but if you don't supplement that with food, um, carbs and protein specifically, then your body can't assimilate all that training. If your body is in stress and hasn't had enough calories, you're not going to get the benefits from the workout that you would if you ate within say 30 minutes of getting back from a session. And I think that's especially important with like long runs where you're calorie depleted and strength training sessions and interval training sessions where you've worked really hard. The next one is prioritizing sleep and recovery. So I have a whoop, I am an ambassador of theirs. This is not an ad for them, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. I adore it because it really makes me focus on sleep and recovery and gives me quantifiable metrics about how I'm doing and I I think without that I'm not so good at being like okay I have to go to sleep at 10 p.m. I have to sleep until the morning I have to not drink late in the evening because it's gonna affect my sleep same with like eating sugar really late all of that kind of stuff I mean I have quantifiable evidence that doing all of that makes me sleep less well and makes me feel less recovered when I wake up in the morning and I can feel it don't get me wrong like I know what my brain is telling me I don't need data to tell me that but it's really nice to kind of have have that backing up how I feel and also I don't like losing so <laughs> having that on my watch I mean I really want like an 80 plus percent recovery score when I wake up in the morning and I know that if I drink the night before or if I don't eat well or if I don't recover after a long run that I'm not going to get that so having the whoop is really helpful in that and it also allows me to kind of look at how much strain I've built up through that day not just in terms of exercise but also in terms of just like wandering around like I mentioned with a dog walks. If I do a really long 
dog walk, I might not think of it as training, but it's still an hour, two hours on feet. So it still makes a big difference. And getting that strain score on my whoop is a good way of reminding me that I still need to recover from that. So it's been super valuable for me. I do have a discount code for them as well. So if you guys want to check it out, you can get a your first month free. You can basically try it out for completely free. You get the band for free by clicking the link that is down below. I think it's just join.whoop.com forward slash flora. I really rate it. I think it's really good. And for another reason as well, which is the next point, which is building my aerobic base, which is kind of the overarching goal of all the training, all the running training and hiking training that I'm going to be doing. And this involves WHOOP as well, but you guys may have heart rate monitors. So I'm basically working on doing a lot of low heart rate stuff. And some of you who watch my channel religiously, um, hi, by the way, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. You may remember that back in like February time, I was having some issues with my heart and I did get an ECG and I got an echocardiogram. Both of them came up all good. I have a murmur, but it shouldn't affect how I feel when I run and I've had it for a really long time. So I didn't have any issues that were seriously obvious. Best guess is that it's something post-viral, but what I did find really helped was maintaining a low heart rate when I was running, but I don't trust wrist-based heart rate monitors, either of them, even though they're both really good tech. So what I've started doing is basically moving this, opening it and moving it up to my bicep, recording my heart rate from there. And this is the latest tech when it comes to optical heart rate sensors. Obviously you can get one that goes around your chest. They are the gold standard in heart rate sensors. But as someone who wears a sports bra, I don't really find that very comfortable. I get chafing, especially in long ultra marathons and stuff. If I'm wearing a bag and I used to have one, so I know this for a fact, I have a scar and everything from a, a chaf chafing heart rate monitor. That was one of the really good polar ones as well. It's, it's nothing to do with the brand. So I didn't want to use one of those. And then I was looking at the Polar Verity Sense and the Wahoo ticker, both of which are optical ones that go on your arm. This uses exactly the same tech as those. And so I just moved it up there and they have a bicep specific strap if you guys wanna do that instead. But just by opening it, it gets wider and you can either put it on your forearm. I think a lot of guys have bigger forearms than I do. You can either put it there or you can put it on your bicep. And the accuracy of my heart rate on my runs recently has been so much better. And so it's allowed me to work on low heart rate running and that should be helping my aerobic base. And I think a lot of us are are guilty of maybe doing our slow, easy runs, recovery runs, especially just too fast. And when you're not training a huge amount, that doesn't really make a difference. You can do a lot of your training in zone three and it's absolutely fine. But when you're training a lot, and I have found this when I'm up to like 60 plus kilometers a week, I start to struggle to maintain that intensity. And for some reason, I don't think it's ego. I think it's just habit. I still end up running my easy runs just a little bit, just marginally too hard. And so knowing that I can now have my heart rate monitor and it links up to this, you can um, transmit basically the heart rate from this up there onto my watch so I can look at that and make sure that I'm maintaining my heart rate under, under 150, which is my zone two, for all of my runs. And to make sure that that is 100% correct, I'm also gonna go get a lactate threshold test at Bath Uni, I hope, and I will be vlogging that for you guys. I just think it's really interesting. I mean, it's completely unnecessary unless you want really pinpoint accurate heart rate zones, which I guess is quite useful if you do do heart rate training, but I'm going to go get that tested out and share it with you guys because I am genuinely interested in low heart rate training and the idea of math training. I would be interested to know if any of you guys have used it or tried it before, but at the same time with only 16 weeks until my big, big race, I don't really have the time to play around with it too much. I'm hoping that doing a little bit of lower intensity stuff will allow me to build an aerobic base on which I can then build some more fast paced stuff and building up the strength, speed and hill work that I need to be able to do my races justice really. So that is it, that's Project BAM uh, in a nutshell, a very long 20 minute nutshell. It's hills, strength and conditioning, supplements, protein, throughout the day, prioritizing sleep and recovery, and overall improving my aerobic base and doing low heart rate training. And if you guys want to see any more specifics on each of those elements or any of those elements, just let me know and I will do a video on it. I think it's really cool to be able to play around with your training and kind of use yourself as an N equals one experiment, because although there's so much theory out there, I also think that obviously different things work for different people. It's all well and good reading a book and oh my God, I've read so many books on this sort of stuff, but actually, 
you never really know what's going to work for you until you try it and I think my mileage needs to be higher than 50, 60 kilometers a week if I want to be doing this sort of stuff and I'm figuring out a way that I can get there without overdoing it and without injuring myself or getting ill really consistently. So that's kind of my priority. That's the reasoning behind it. I don't have all the answers and I don't think anyone has the answers. It's just a case of trying it out and seeing what works. And although I'm super impatient and really want to be doing everything immediately and be racing really well this year now, that's just not realistic. That's just not how it works. You've really got to go slow. And also remember that this season of racing is not the only time that you're going to be racing, hopefully in your future. You know, you've got to think about the long-term consequences you know the future of your running journey or whatever sport it is that you choose to do so those are my words of wisdom project BAM is so exciting for me because it is like a goal to work towards that isn't just focused on racing and race times it's a sort of lots of different steps along the way that I can tick and hopefully by the end of it if I trust the process that's gonna lead to a good race and an enjoyable race most importantly so that's it that's project BAM I hope you guys like it if you guys want to join me please join me let me know if there's a way that I can make it kind of more shareable more joinable <laughs> I don't I don't really know but if you guys have any ideas then just hit me up in the comments below or come and find me over on Instagram it is at food fitness flora I will be sharing more stuff over there as well and also on my TikTok so yeah that is it for this week's vlog I hope you enjoyed it next week we'll be back running so if you did enjoy it please do hit the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed already hit the subscribe because you're gonna want to see what I have coming up soon that is it. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!